Nigeria, and South Africa as two of the continent's largest and most influential countries have a rich history as well as resilience and aspirations that shape Africa's evolving identity. This video uncovers Nigeria and South Africa's multifaceted dimensions, exploring their distinct strengths, challenges, and contributions to the intricate mosaic of the African experience. From political landscapes to economic prowess, cultural heritage to social dynamics, join us in unraveling the stories of these powerhouse nations. In the current landscape of African geopolitics and economic dynamics, there is a widespread belief that Nigeria does not measure up to South Africa's expectations. However, a closer examination of recent economic trends reveals a different story. Nigeria has emerged as a powerhouse, rapidly expanding its economy, while South Africa struggles to remain relevant in an ever-changing global economic landscape. This sets the stage for a nuanced examination of the two countries in our upcoming comparison, inviting you to look into the intricate details of Nigeria's burgeoning economic prowess and South Africa's ongoing struggles in recent years. But which of these two countries can we say is objectively better than the other? Well, we're about to find out. Firstly, let's talk about surface area. The comparison of Nigeria and South Africa covers a wide range of topics, including land size and geographical features. Nigeria, with a vast surface area of approximately 923,768 square kilometers, is slightly smaller than South Africa, which covers 1,219,090 square kilometers. Beyond size, the distribution of land use is an important factor in determining each country's environmental health. Nigeria has 9.5% forest coverage, which plays an important role in air purification and pollutant removal, giving it a slight advantage in terms of air quality over South Africa, which has 7.6% coverage. The allocation of land for agricultural purposes is an important metric, especially in economies that rely on raw materials for industrial development. Nigeria devotes roughly 78% of its land to agriculture, demonstrating its commitment to maintaining a strong agricultural sector. South Africa is not far behind, allocating approximately 79.4% of its surface area to agricultural activities. Furthermore, coastal planning is critical, not only for tourism, but also for economic activities facilitated by shipping ports. Nigeria has an 853-kilometer-long coastline, highlighting its potential as a trade, import, and export hub. These diverse geographical factors contribute to the distinct identities of both countries and influence their economic and environmental landscapes. The coastal lengths of Manchuria and South Africa differ significantly, with South Africa having 2,798 kilometers of coastline, far exceeding Manchuria's 853 kilometers. This contrast suggests that South Africa's coastlines provide more opportunities for a wide range of activities and industries, including tourism and maritime trade. The extensive coastal presence is not only aesthetically significant, but also economically pivotal, given the potential for ports, shipping, and other marine-related activities. Moving beyond coastal considerations, assessing total water area becomes critical to understanding a country's water resources and environmental health. Nigeria's generous water area of approximately 13,000 square kilometers surpasses South Africa's water area of approximately 4,000 square kilometers. This implies that, on a relative scale, Nigeria has more abundant water resources, which are critical for sustained ecosystems, providing potable water, and supporting various sectors reliant on water availability. The contrasting figures highlight the various geographical features that contribute to the distinct environmental contexts of both countries. Secondly, let's talk about their respective socio-political landscapes. As you all may know, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the former two-term governor of Lagos State, was officially elected president of the country on the 25th of February 2023. His victory, however, was moored by allegations of voter fraud and other acts of racketeering, which sadly is a rather recurring theme in Nigerian elections. On the other hand, South Africa is scheduled to have elections of its own in 2024. South Africa will hold general elections in 2024 to elect a new National Assembly and provincial legislatures in each province. 
This will be the seventh general election held with universal adult suffrage since the end of apartheid in 1994. The new National Council of Provinces will be elected during the first session of each provincial legislature. Since the first post-apartheid election in 1994, the African National Congress has controlled a majority of seats in the National Assembly. The incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa, will set the date of the elections, which must be held within 90 days of the end of the current parliament's term in mid-May 2024. Now, let us talk about the economy. The gross domestic product, GDP, is a key indicator of an economy's size and productivity, measuring the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country each year. When these economic metrics are calculated at purchasing power parity, Nigeria emerges as Africa's largest economy, with a GDP of $1.2 trillion. In comparison, South Africa's GDP is $813 billion. Nigeria is the continent's wealthiest country due to its significant economic gap. It is worth noting that GDP at purchasing power parity takes into account differences in living costs and inflation rates, allowing for a more nuanced understanding of economic strength. Examining tax policies helps to distinguish these African economic powerhouses. Nigeria has a 5% value-added tax, BVAT, whereas South Africa has a much higher VAT of 15%. The disparity in VAT rates can have an impact on consumer behavior, government revenue, and overall economic dynamics in both countries. Furthermore, an assessment of public debt, or the total amount of government borrowings, reveals that Nigeria's public debt is approximately 21% of its GDP, whereas South Africa's public debt is 53% of its GDP. These economic indicators highlight the fiscal disparities and policy nuances that distinguish Nigeria and South Africa's economic landscapes. When it comes to economic indicators, inflation and unemployment are critical in determining a country's economic health. Inflation rates in Nigeria and South Africa differ significantly. Nigeria has a higher inflation rate of 16.5%, indicating a significant annual increase in the price of goods and services and a corresponding loss of purchasing power. In contrast, South Africa maintains a lower inflation rate of 5.3%, implying a relatively more stable economic environment with moderate price increases. Unemployment rates are important indicators of labor market trends and economic opportunities. Nigeria currently has a 16.7% unemployment rate, highlighting challenges in job creation and potential economic constraints. South Africa's unemployment rate is significantly higher, at 27.5%, indicating a more serious problem in the labor market. Furthermore, calculating GDP per capita, which reflects average income per person, shows that Nigeria has a GDP per capita of $6,130, while South Africa has a higher figure of $13,800. This significant gap in GDP per capita suggests that the two countries' standards of living differ, with South Africa having a higher average income, potentially contributing to a more prosperous population. Let's talk about the youth unemployment rate. Examining youth unemployment rates provides insight into the employment challenges that young people face. In Nigeria, the youth unemployment rate is 12.4%, indicating that a portion of the younger population has difficulty finding work. However, the youth unemployment rate in South Africa is much higher, at 53.4%. This stark contrast highlights the significant employment disparities between the two countries, indicating potential barriers to young people's entry into the South African labor market. When healthcare expenditure is measured as a percentage of GDP, both countries allocate resources differently to meet their healthcare requirements. In Nigeria, total expenditure on medical and paramedical services accounts for approximately 3.7% of GDP, indicating a relatively low investment in the healthcare sector. South Africa, on the other hand, devotes a larger proportion of its GDP to healthcare, with 8.1% spent on it. This disparity indicates differences in the healthcare infrastructure and services available to citizens in the two countries, which would influence health outcomes and accessibility for the respective populations. 
Demographic factors are critical to understanding a nation's composition and dynamics. Nigeria has a large labor force of 60 million people, demonstrating the significant human capital that contributes to the country's economic activities. South Africa, on the other hand, has a youth population of 22.18 million people, highlighting the importance of the country's younger demographic in shaping its future. These demographic differences have an impact on workforce dynamics, economic productivity, and social development in each country, influencing policy decisions and development plans. Nigeria and South Africa have different priorities when it comes to allocating public expenditure on military and security services. Nigeria devotes 0.5% of its GDP to public spending on military and security services, indicating a modest investment in these sectors. In contrast, South Africa allocates a higher percentage, with military and security spending accounting for 1.07% of GDP. This disparity highlights distinct national security strategies and priorities, reflecting each country's unique geopolitical and domestic circumstances. The allocation of resources to defense and security reflects a country's determination to protect its interests and maintain stability in the face of various challenges. Nigeria and South Africa's population dynamics have a significant impact on their economies and societies. Nigeria is Africa's most populous country, with more than 200 million people. In contrast, South Africa has a population of more than 57 million. This demographic contrast has far-reaching implications for a variety of factors, particularly economic opportunities and market size. Large populations frequently attract businesses and investments, resulting in a wider consumer base and a more diverse talent pool. Nigeria's large population suggests a potentially lucrative market for businesses, with a sizable audience and opportunities for economic development. Population density is an important metric for determining the spatial distribution of inhabitants. Nigeria's population density is influenced by its vast land area and large population, whereas South Africa has a more moderate population density due to its larger land area relative to population. High population density constrain infrastructure and resources, potentially causing problems if not managed properly. The comparison of population density in Nigeria and South Africa sheds light on each country's living conditions and urbanization patterns, allowing for a more complete understanding of their demographic profiles. Nigeria has a population density of 215 people per square kilometer, which is significantly higher than South Africa's density of 47 people per square kilometer. This disparity in population density has significant implications for both countries. Nigeria's high population density makes it difficult to secure basic amenities and manage essential services. Waste management, road traffic congestion, housing shortages, and potential increases in crime rates are frequently linked to higher population density. The strain on infrastructure and resources caused by urbanization becomes clear, emphasizing the importance of strategic urban planning and development initiatives. Examining the population growth rate further illuminates the dynamics within these countries. While the global population growth rate averages around 1.07% per year, there are variations at the national level. Understanding the growth rate reveals societal dynamics and potential challenges in managing population growth. Higher growth rates can result in a more dynamic society, but they can also present challenges in resource allocation, infrastructure development, and social services. As Nigeria and South Africa navigate their demographic trajectories, these issues become critical for policymakers and stakeholders alike. Nigeria and South Africa's annual population growth rates provide valuable insights into their respective demographic dynamics. Nigeria has a significantly higher growth rate of 2.45%, indicating a rapid expansion of its population. In contrast, South Africa's growth rate is significantly lower at 0.79%, indicating a slower rate of demographic expansion. The disparity in growth rates has implications for resource allocation, infrastructure development, and social services in both nations. While higher growth rates indicate a more dynamic society, they also present challenges in managing the associated demands on healthcare, education, and job opportunities.
Examining life expectancy helps us better understand the overall quality of life in Nigeria and South Africa. Nigeria has an overall life expectancy of 59 years, which represents the average number of years a person can expect to live when born. In comparison, South Africa has a higher average life expectancy of 64 years. These figures imply that, on average, a Nigerian is more likely to die at the age of 59 whereas a South African can expect to live to 64 years. Notably, life expectancy varies by gender, with women outliving men in both countries. Women in Nigeria are expected to live up to 63 years, compared to 57 years for men, while in South Africa, women have a 65-year life expectancy, compared to men's 63. Let's compare the birth rate in both countries. Analyzing birth and death rates reveals important demographic information about Nigeria and South Africa. The birth rate, also known as the crude birth rate, represents the annual number of births per 1,000 people. Nigeria has a higher birth rate of 35.2 per thousand, indicating a more dynamic demographic scenario characterized by a large number of annual births. In contrast, South Africa's birth rate is 19.9 per thousand, indicating a slower rate of population growth. Examining the death rate, also known as the crude death rate, reveals the annual number of deaths per 1,000 people in mid-year. Nigeria has a death rate of 9.6 per thousand, while South Africa's death rate is slightly lower at 9.3 per thousand. These figures provide information about the overall mortality trends in each country. Differences in birth and death rates help to calculate the population growth rate, which is an important factor in determining a country's demographic landscape. Understanding these rates can help policymakers address various aspects of public health, healthcare infrastructure, and social services to ensure the well-being of their communities. Nigeria has a total fertility rate of 4.6, which represents the average number of children born to each woman, whereas South Africa's rate is significantly lower at 2.26. This suggests that, on average, Nigerian women have a higher fertility rate, contributing to a larger population growth potential than South Africa. The disparity in fertility rates reflects demographic differences and has ramifications for countries' population structures and growth paths. Moving on to the median age, which is a key demographic indicator, Nigeria has a median age of 18 years, indicating a significantly younger population. In contrast, South Africa's median age is 27, indicating a slightly older demographic structure. Younger populations are frequently associated with greater dynamism and creativity, which contributes to development opportunities. However, extremely low median ages can present challenges, particularly in terms of socioeconomic issues such as poverty. These demographic insights provide a nuanced understanding of age distribution in Nigeria and South Africa, which is critical for policymakers when developing societal development strategies and addressing each population's unique needs. When analyzing the digital landscape, South Africa has a higher internet penetration rate, with 54% of its population having internet access, compared to Nigeria, which has only 25%. This disparity reflects the two countries' varying levels of digital connectivity and accessibility, which affects information dissemination, online services, and participation in the digital economy. South Africa's higher internet penetration translates into more opportunities for online engagement and access to digital resources for its citizens. Examining the energy sector reveals a disparity in electricity access. In Nigeria, approximately 59% of the population, both rural and urban, has access to electricity, whereas in South Africa, the figure is significantly higher at 84%. Nigeria's electricity access challenges create impediments in a variety of sectors, affecting daily life, businesses, and overall economic activity. The disparity in electricity access highlights infrastructural gaps and differences in energy provision between the two countries, affecting quality of life and economic productivity. Furthermore, South Africa's more reliable electricity supply helps to create a more favorable environment for industrial activities and economic development. The stark difference in the number of airports demonstrates the disparities in international connectivity between Nigeria and South Africa.
Nigeria has 54 airports, while South Africa has a much larger network, 566 airports. The disparity in airport infrastructure suggests that South Africa has a more extensive and well-connected air transportation system, allowing for easier international travel and encouraging economic and cultural exchanges. South Africa's abundance of airports improves its global connectivity, potentially leading to stronger trade relations and tourism inflow. Shifting the focus to quality of life, obesity rates in Nigeria and South Africa show distinct health trends. Nigeria reports a lower obesity rate of 8.9%, indicating a healthier adult population, whereas South Africa has a higher obesity rate of 28.3%. Obesity can cause chronic health problems, and the prevalence of obesity in South Africa highlights potential health challenges and risks. This health disparity emphasizes the importance of public health initiatives and lifestyle factors that influence the well-being of Nigerian and South African populations, respectively. The stark difference in poverty rates between Nigeria and South Africa highlights significant economic disparities between the two countries. Official statistics show that 70% of Manchuria's population lives below the poverty line, indicating widespread economic challenges and a significant struggle for survival. In sharp contrast, South Africa has a significantly lower poverty rate, with 16% of the population living below the poverty line. This significant disparity in poverty rates reflects the two countries' distinct economic landscapes and varying levels of economic well-being. Examining the educational landscape, school life expectancy highlights the differences between Nigeria and South Africa. In Nigeria, the average child is expected to complete nine years of schooling, highlighting challenges in educational access and completion. South Africa, on the other hand, has a significantly longer school life expectancy, with an average of 14 years of education. This disparity suggests differences in the educational infrastructure and opportunities available to children in the two countries, which affects their potential for personal and professional growth. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a sub so you never miss another video. See you in the next video.